somebody, they asked me uh, how I got involved in Black Lives Matter. Um, I've always been part of Black Lives Matter. When I came out the womb, I was part of Black Lives Matter. <laughs> and then I went to Morehouse because I felt like I need to know more about my people because in the book, history books, they weren't teaching me. So I went to a sort of black college. And when I got to Morehouse, I learned a lot. But then we had the Troy Davis incident where he was falsely prosecuted for a murder that he did not do. And they did not overturn it even though witnesses came out and said that they lied. And he was executed. Then it was a Trayvon Marley. But let me, let me also bring up with this Black Lives Matter movement, we need to remember, definitely as black males, we gotta step up and remember the women. If you, need, if you don't know about that, then please look up the hashtag, um, say her name. Because right now it's going, you need to hear those stories. I'm not going to tell you about those stories because you need to read about that. It's more than just black males that have been had police brutality. There's also women. For us at NBWA, we organize a multiracial alliance of domestic worker organizing projects and organizations who are fighting to ensure that women who are holding together the tatters of our democracy and our economy are empowered to reshape what a new world can look like in our image. What's also important for us to just know, right, is that domestic work is rooted in the legacy of slavery. Right. It's rooted in the legacy of slavery. Black women were forced to work for free to rejuvenate and replicate families of people who had power. That means domestic workers, black women, were made to nurse other people's children and denied the ability to nurse their own. That means that domestic workers cleaned other people's houses and fed other people's families before they fed their own, before they cleaned their own, if they were even able to do that. If you address those conditions, you address some of the fundamental contradictions of this economy. But also, the reality is we can't be narrow when we think about why are we organizing domestic workers around wages and contracts and benefits and rights, because it's also very much a struggle for dignity. And what dignity looks like, right, is being able to live in a community where you are free from fear. Domestic workers are mothers whose children are being attacked by the police, by ICE agents. That's just real, y'all. When we talk about what is the connection between black domestic workers and the Black Lives Matter movement, what I would say is black domestic workers are at the heart of the movement. It was black women who brought us the idea that our Identities are complex and need to be nurtured in their fullest. Intersectionality is not a new idea, y'all. We didn't come up with that. I wish I could take credit for it. It was black women who led the coalition to win the first domestic worker bill of rights in this country. It was black women who led the effort to win one of the most comprehensive domestic worker bill of rights in the country that includes pregnancy leave, that includes the right to be evaluated and to evaluate your employer. And that's bomb. Mm -hmm. So that's why we need to cultivate black leadership as a movement. Mm -hmm. That is why if we're going to build a healthy multiracial democracy, we have to cultivate the ability of black workers and black people to lead, to thrive, to vision, to shape what it is that we want to see coming forward. Because real talk, and we say this a lot, when black folks get free, everybody, everybody, everybody gets free. Okay. So in closing, I would ask you, what would your life look like, whether you're black or not, if black lives matter? Thank you. 
I work at Highland Hospital, which is known in the northern um, regional Bay Area out here as one of the number one trauma units. The struggle that we're actually having in there is, like I said, is being able to allow individuals from a black perspective or even from a minority's perspective to grow in leadership roles inside of the hospital, to be able to be counted on for their other peers can see them and say that this is a leader and that we can be able to follow in that aspect and we can grow and be educated and learn from that. Um, we organize up there, we help educate and we utilize that process to actually go outside of the working aspect and into the communities. What we want to do is actually develop leaders that actually can go into the communities and fight the rights, whether it's police brutality, low wage and paying jobs, uh, the fight for 15, um, so many other fights that we're actually involved in right now in the local, like I said, it gives these workers an actual platform to express themselves when that's not given at the actual workplaces. This issue is about police brutality. This issue is about low-wage jobs. This issue is about people not stepping up when they know they can talk because they refuse to, because they're like, I don't want to be part of that issue. That ain't got to deal with me. Yes, it does. You're watching it. When you see a murder, you're a witness to that, right? So when you see injustice, you're a witness to that. So you need to testify your story, you need to preach it to somebody else, and you need to bring people together. Black people didn't say, hey, today I want to be oppressed. I want to be treated this kind of way. And the reason why this is on here is only because of all of us collectively are in a room together that say one injury to one is an injury to all. Whenever you have an upsurge of black activism that is really deeply felt among black folks, there will always be a worker expression of that. Not that it might be, it will always happen. Now, in some ways, the clearest example of that might be coming out of the period of the late 60s, early 70s, we had a rise in black power activism. We had along with that the rise in black caucuses and unions and the formation of, of different multi-union black spaces as well. But there are other examples. If you think about kind of the kind of the, the, the traditional sort of civil rights activism of from Montgomery to, to, to Selma, where once again deeply felt in the black community, you had black unionists being the backbone of bringing folk to Washington in 1963. You always have that. And, and so the question that we gotta talk about is not what should be, but what is the current expression of that black book, book activism? It will exist. It, it may not be in the form we see about, or we tweet about, or we read on, on certain blog, but it has to be the case. And, and so the idea is really what does it mean? How do we build on that? You know, they're telling Alicia, this is a marathon. You know, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And, and so we have, always have upsurges, and by definition, you go up and you come down, but we go up again. And, and so the question is how do you take this upsurge? And, and, and you come out of it stronger and, and more powerful. Right. The problem is, is we don't ask questions and we don't challenge people. That's right. That's right. Many times we don't want to challenge the people that we believe are on our side. We're like, hey, they, they did 25% of stuff, right? That's, that's better than the last person. No, no, they ain't did it right. Since they haven't done it right, ask questions, be critical. I'm not sure if you guys know how a diamond comes out. It's with tension. It's with tension. Tension builds strength. I'm not sure if y'all been to the gym. Once you work out, you're tired. You wore out. So you need to know that it's going to hurt. We're going to be in pain sometimes. But at the end of the day, once you build that strength, once you're able to hold yourself up and hold your brother and sister up, that's what we need to have. But we can't just have it in this building because we love to have it here. We love to have it when you're going to have it. We love to set the dates. No, it's every day. 365 days. 24 hours. So remember that. Please remember that. Like, come together. It does not matter who you are, how old you are, what's your gender, your sexual orientation. Just know that you got to fight injustice 24-7. Amen. Amen.